What's up guys, it's Giovanni. Uh, we're playing some more of the Anne Frank house. Not exactly your typical kind of PS3 game or something you'd normally expect. It's a uh, edutainment uh, program slash learning game. Uh, it's almost vintage because it uh, was written in 1999. Can't even find it anywhere, anywhere except for maybe on eBay. So, uh, basically it's a VR program that allows you to walk around and visit the Anne Frank house uh, that's uh, in Amsterdam, Netherlands, on the uh, Pussengacht. And uh, that's where we are right now. And as you can see, the interface it shows you a lot of information about what's around this area. And basically you just click on items and it allows you to learn more information about it. So, uh, let, me, let me go click on something that's green here. And, uh, so what you do is you click on the mouse, and you can only use the mouse when you use the keyboard to do this kind of stuff. And then press space on the keyboard to give you this. Um, so that's not what we wanted, we just want to click on stuff, so let's go click. It's a click adventure. No one dies, no one gets hurt. And that probably wouldn't be PC if anyone did. Um, it's just, think of it as like a, hist a living VR history book. So, let's start clicking. Organized by the Sonderreferat Truppenbetreuung of the Reichskommissariat, boat tours are held for soldiers in their free time. In June 1944, German soldiers take a scenic boat ride along the canals of Amsterdam. They're wounded veterans from the front in northern France and have come here to convalesce. The tour takes them past West Church Tower. Everything looks perfectly normal, as if nothing unusual were happening. Interesting. Let's try to find some more green things to click on. And you notice there, if you look at the uh, lower right down there, there's actually a checkbox. Uh, so this is like the, the game-like functionality, where uh, it's sort of like Pokemon, you, you got to click it all. And if you do click it and you've been there before, you'll see this checkbox uh, right down there, uh, highlighting that uh, you've actually seen that part, so you don't have to backtrack or if you you think you missed something, you, you know for sure because it's got that checkbox. So, uh, let's try to find some more green things to click on. Yeah, that's a checkbox. We watched that earlier in the video, first video. I think there's one on the tower here. The church tower of the Westerkirk plays an important role in the diary. On the 11th of July, 1942, she notes that her parents and her sister cannot get accustomed to the continual chime of the church bells. She has always liked it from the beginning. She finds it a reassuring sound, especially at night. The people in hiding are terrified of the bombing. After all, there's nowhere they can go to escape any fires. They're not the only ones to feel threatened. Everyone is afraid, but the authorities show reassuring films in cinemas. The fire brigade is on the alert. Even in the West Church Tower, this film from 1943 shows a fireman demonstrating putting out a fire with a fire hose. In the background, a secret annex can be seen. Of course, the people in hiding there cannot. If the bells in the tower fail to chime, Anne mentions it in her diary. It's frightening when things deviate from the normal pattern. In August 1943, writes Anne, the bells are removed from the tower. They're to be melted down for war materials. Nobody knows what the time is. Outside, it's terrifyingly quiet. Oh, well, there you go. Terrifyingly quiet. Okay. So, let's, uh, let's find some more green items. <clears throat> yeah, I think uh, this side of the uh, Princeton Grach, this is actually all commandeered by the uh, Anne Frank Foundation. They made a museum on the right side. Um, so let's, uh, let's click on some more stuff here. What's this? 
The neighboring house to the right of Anne's hiding place is used by the cake company, a wholesaler of coffee. The neighboring house to the right of Anne's hiding place is used by the cake company, a wholesaler of coffee. But occasionally, they hear sounds coming from the cake company. Then, for hours afterward, they wait, terrified that something is about to happen. Are there people in the building next door or not? After the war, employees of the cake company were interviewed by the police. They said they never suspected that Jews were hiding next door. <clears throat> if you notice that there was a little bit of a, a hiccup where it repeated a, a segment of the audio, uh, that's a bug of the program uh, running in Windows uh, 7. Uh, that never happened in Windows 98, if I recall, when I was playing it back then. Um, so there's that. Uh, please forgive the bugginess. Uh, this program uh, surprisingly still works inside Windows 7. So uh, that's something we just have to bear with. Well, so it's check marked. We've uh, went through that. Let's see. Like this. These are photographs of the Prinzengracht taken over the years. The appearance of the house at Prinzengracht 263 has gradually changed. Cars parked outside give an indication of the period in which the pictures were taken. The house now known as the Anne Frank House is more than 350 years old. During the house now known as the Anne Frank House is more than 350 years old. During hallways, stairways and spaces, all behind a simple narrow facade. The house was built in 1635 on one of the new canals that were being dug surrounding the medieval city center. The three new canals served to enlarge the city significantly. They enabled boats to transport trade goods, which had sailed from around the world, directly to the warehouses and businesses. The buildings were built narrow, so that as many as possible could be fit along each canal. Even so, they are quite spacious inside because they are extremely deep, about 25 meters in length on average. However, a building that is only six meters wide will not allow very much daylight into the depths of the house. For that reason, Many are built in two sections, connected by a courtyard and a hallway. These are referred to as front house and rear house. Number 263 Prinzengracht has also been built according to this kind of plan, and the annex, as it's called in English, is the rear house. Since its construction in 1635, the building has seen a wide variety of uses, serving as everything from a coach house to a residence, it was built in two sections and then later on joined up. During its long history, the building has taken on a myriad of rooms, stairways and halls. It's easy to get lost here. A good place to hide, in other words. You heard another hiccup there in the audio. That's just gonna happen. A whole lot. Let's see if we can find some more stuff. During the war, the Elhook Furniture Upholstery Shop is located at number 261. During the war, the Elhook Furniture Upholstery Shop is located at number 261. When the weather was fine, he and his colleagues occasionally ate lunch in the broad roof guttering between both the buildings. They sometimes heard voices coming from the secret annex, but didn't think much about this.
Okay, can you click on it? This uh, game's basically whack-a-mole. You gotta find the green. Click on it. You can find it. Okay, let's go in. Isn't this cool? It's 3D V. It's uh, basically a VR. You can move your mouse around and get a good feel of what's actually inside here. And that takes you out. Basically, you can tell if it's actually moving because it says to something something. So to the front warehouse, to the pushing dock. This is what you'd see if you actually went to the Anne Frank house in uh, Amsterdam. Uh, so let's uh, let's go upstairs. I think this is the uh, where the offices are on the right side here. I think that's his office, I think. Front office. Look at that. Right, right mouse button. What does that give you? Oh. Just like hitting space. Okay. The helpers. Meet Geese. Yeah, she recently passed away, I think in 2010, I believe. Pretty recent. She was the last one of the helpers that actually survived from back that time. She was pretty old. Uh, but, uh, yeah, she... Very important person. I think she's the one that actually discovered the diary of Anne Frank that was actually left on the floor after the, um, the building was ransacked. And we have lots of other people who were here. Sorry. Johannes Kleinman, there's Otto Frank the father, uh, Victor Kugler, uh, Beep Bep, can't pronounce, I'm not even going to try to pronounce your last name. Okay, there's a rear photo. That's some kind of heater. Google, Bep, Geese. Okay, you can't click on the people. And then Margot. For Meep, Geese, and Bep Foscow, the helpers, looking after the families in hiding means a For Meep, Geese, and Bep Foscow, the helpers. Looking after the families in hiding means a doing odd jobs. As our notes on the 11th of July, 1943, it makes both of them feel quite important. Anyone can file correspondence and keep a sales book, but she and her sister are very accurate at the job. And so it goes, and the repeating <laughs> bug. I uh, hate it when that happens, but nothing I can do about it. Um, okay, we'll come back after the break. We'll uh, investigate more of this house. Uh, if you like what you're seeing, please read and subscribe to my channel. Comment on this video. Let me know what's going on. What you think? <laughs>